I grew up in Grangetown and it's, I think, the most diverse area in Wales. You know, a melting pot of people. Everyone's football crazy here. We're such a tight-knit community and because we're such a football-mad community as well, we always played from when we were kids. My love for football kind of came from my dad. He grew up watching Liverpool in Hong Kong and he brought that over to us. With five daughters, he kind of had no one else to share his love for football. Like, it had to be us. We became referees kind of off chance. We were at the Grange Pavilion, which is like our local community center one day, and a referee was down as part of the FAW's referee diversity program. Seeing the decisions the referees actually make, that's what really intrigued me, and obviously seeing like another side of football that I never had before. We all kind of did the workshop, and as soon as we heard that we could become referees, we were like, that's really cool, like why not? The first thing on a referee description is probably being a leader. Ultimately, you are taking charge of the game. And I think it has allowed me and Rasheen to become leaders in our community. When I first became a referee, I was like, I was so scared. I've always been a very shy and quiet person. So refereeing just kind of helped me grow with my confidence and just grow thick skin, which I think is really important for a lot of shy people out there. Rosheen, to be honest with you, has, has always lacked confidence and in the last couple of years I've seen her really mature. She really wants to help people, especially her community, especially the girls. And to see that growth in both of them is so rewarding. When I was younger, I didn't really notice the lack of representation. Being older now and seeing it, I can kind of realise how much it would have affected me without me even realizing. We've just seen it with the, the Women's World Cup. And I was like, oh my God, like that is possible. And I think it kind of goes back to this whole idea of if you can't see it, you can't be it. Before they kind of just looked at us and they'd be like, hijabi girls, like what do they know about football? But now that they know what we do, they kind of just like find it normal. I coach now at the primary school that I used to go to. It genuinely gives me goosebumps seeing them kind of, now it's something in their mind. Oh, I can be a referee or I can be a footballer. But it just makes me happy that like girls like us are like doing something for ourselves and paving our own way. The girls are living my dream. I wish I could have done this, but I had no chance. My mum is one of my biggest role models, how she just overcame everything that she's been through within her life. And my aunties and my nan as well. They also helped me a lot going into the industry that I wanted to because it's not normal for Pakistani girls to be going into sport industries. Last year, the BBC published um, an article about us. Obviously, it was all over social media and we had quite a few comments online. I just laughed off and I was like, we're famous, like we got hate comments, you know? But I think we kind of had our own discussions about racism and Islamophobia and sexism and all the things that were being said to us. And obviously, I, I tell the girls how to deal with it. You just ignore it. You're better than that. And it usually stems from people who are just jealous. It's kind of just about sticking together and remembering that you are here for a reason and you have a right to be here. And you're always going to have negative feedback on in whatever you do. So if you're passionate about something and if you love it, then you just got to keep going forward with it. This story has just lit our community alight. The two girls have been absolutely incredible, inspirational in motivating and encouraging young people to not only participate, but to compete as well and to showcase who they are and where they come from. It's part of my importance to have some sort of representation so young people can aspire, can see if they can do it, so can I. Every young person needs a champion, giving them the correct skill set for them to open the doors themselves and subsequently open the doors for others. Everyone needs that little bit of help in hand, particularly now, you know, coming out of COVID and the pandemic. There's a lot of challenges facing uh, young people. If I didn't take the opportunity that I took, you know, I would be sat here now, you know. We got to represent Wales. I'm an ambassador for the Euro 2028 bid, which is probably the coolest thing. Being a change maker as a young person is so important because it feels like your voice is heard and it feels like you're making the change in your community that you always wanted to see. Change making to me is people that kind of stand up for what's right, knowing that you might not always have the best kind of um, response to it. Looking at the world around you and kind of seeing where you can make that change and where you can make an impact and knowing what your kind of strong suits are. When I was little, I really wanted to play for a team and I think the closest team for us was about 30 minutes away and you'd have to pay like ridiculous amounts of money every, every season. So I wanted to set up something where the girls in our community is for them on their doorstep and for it to be free as well. I think we've learnt we have a right to be here and I think it took us a long time to realise that. We're here now and we're here to stay. When 
I started all of this, I was so uncomfortable with everything that I was doing and I was still so shy. You just gotta step out of your comfort zone and just say, yeah, I'm gonna do this and you'll actually do it and that's how you're gonna make change.